Hi, I'm Ted, and welcome to The Play's The Thing, where we put the play back in Shakespeare's work. In today's video, I'm going to show you some strategies for enhancing your student's speaking ability, as well as ways to familiarize themselves with the text so it doesn't seem so scary and it comes a lot easier. So, you ready? Action! Okay, so first, before we get into this, um, we're going to talk a little bit about pedagogical theory. Uh, now, don't worry, it's not going to be as boring as a faculty meeting, I promise. It'll be pretty brief, but I think it's a really important concept. So, when you teach anything or learn anything, whether it's music or sports, you always seem like you have a, you need a warm-up phase, and then you work on your skill uh, development, and then, you know, you go into some different drills, and then you put that into your game situation at the end. So, it's the same thing, I think, with Shakespeare. We have to get those repetitions so that it um, so that we can learn it the problem is is repetitions get boring and so it's a certain point where we're just no longer getting quality repetitions because our brains check out so one way to combat that is to make tiny little shifts in what we're doing so it's a kind of a wake up and it feels like it's something completely different but in reality we're just refreshing but we're still getting the same amount of repetitions so this activity is great for that um, not only are we going to get better at actually speaking and diction um, we're going to actually the, the language won't seem so foreign anymore and I call this activity silly sounds because it's exactly what it is. And I think the other byproduct of this is this energy. It's silly. And we don't even know we're learning as we're going through. And there's laughing and high energy, which is perfect, exactly what we want. So usually what I do is you take a piece of text. And verse tends to work a little bit better than prose, but it doesn't necessarily have to and a student's partner up, um, sometimes threes. You can do it as individuals, but um, sometimes uh, you'll see as we do the exercise, it gives you a little bit of a break um, and it's social, um, so it tends to work better with pairs. Um, so you have the text and you have students just read it and then give them different directions as, as they go, and we'll cover that. Um, so uh, the first thing I do is just have them read with a dramatic flourish. Um, what's the purpose? It just creates energy. And then actors feel like, well, if I'm flourishing like crazy, I must be an actor. And they start getting sort of feeling like they're Shakespeare actors. Um, it creates the energy. And they're reading, right? You're just reading the text. I usually have them switch off uh, every time they come to a major punctuation mark, like, uh, you know, a semicolon or a colon, you know, obviously, or a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point. Um, they can really kind of switch whenever they want. I just don't want it, you know, too much because you don't really get into the flow of it. So just read and flourish. Right? And they're reading and flourishing and they're a little tentative at first, but that's okay. Next, now it starts to get a little bit weird. Pronounce only the consonants. Um, so, we few, we happy few, we band of brothers would be w, f, u, w, b, n, d, v, b, v, r, z. Uh, and go on like that. And they look at you kind of crazy, but then, oh, off you go, and then you sort of model it. Usually I just read and go along, walk around the room, or you can sit there too. And it's tentative at first, but then all of a sudden people are laughing, and it sounds silly, but they're still reading the text. And then, you guessed it, the vowels. Um, actually, sometimes when you go back to the consonants, you actually have to remind them what a consonant is, but that's okay. You can do that. And the vowels, ooh, ah, ah, e, e, ah, ah, o, o, e, e, ah. You know, and so, again, that gets even sillier. But again, the energy is going, and then we're still reading and getting the repetitions. Then, articulate. Have them exaggerate that articulation. Um, so going back to the, the Henry line, we few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today who sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Um, and that kind of works at diction so we can finally get that silent T, you know, it's not spirit, it's spirit, you know, or love. And sometimes I'll do that with students too. Everybody say this with me, love. And I'll feel your lip vibrate. And so um, that really helps with the, with the articulation. Then, 
high and low. Go from the highest part of your vocal register down to the lowest note. Um, now enter time conjecture of a time when creeping murmur in the pouring dark fills the wide vessel of the universe from camp to camp through the foul womb of night. You know, kind of like that. And that gets silly as well, um, but really stretching that vocal range. And going back, it's slight different. So we're not getting, uh, we're still getting repetitions, but it's not getting repetitive because it seems different. So we're kind of waking ourselves up and getting those repetitions. And then, um, now, now you can get into some crazy things. Um, I'll keep this short, but you can get, be as creative as you want. Now sing it. Sing it like an opera. Now rap it. Now sing it like a country song. You know, kind of whatever you want to do, we can get crazy with that. Um, but I almost, so it depends on how much time that I do with this. Usually this is like five, six, seven minute warm up or some skill development, but I will do it frequently, like, you know, a couple times a week for just a short amount of time, especially at the beginning. No, I'm not as much as, the, as later on because we do more complicated things. A note. Rageous accent. Sorry, my, my handwriting is terrible, but I know outrageous accent, no matter what accent you want, you know, maybe a southern bass, whatever you want. And I just kids and they make up some crazy things. And again, sometimes some people are really tentative and that's okay, but other people inevitably come up with great accents and people are laughing, and sometimes you can even get someone to model one. Oh, that's an incredible accent. Um, so again, it creates fun, creates energy. At the same time, we're getting repetitions. And then I almost always end with the whisper because if you end with the outrageous accent the the energy is all over the place and sometimes it's difficult it's to, to recover everybody and get everybody focused because they're laughing so much but the whisper and i say don't lose a single sound that way they can work on the articulation as well and it sort of brings the energy back so that you can talk about it afterwards and debrief it and it makes it you know just makes it easy to bring everybody back into focus before we get into you know the scene or whatever doing that day so I'm going to show you a clip of some real live students. Um, but, well, they're not really live, they're on film, but you know what I mean. In my junior level uh, English class, and again, you can see the energy, or you can hear the energy, see the energy, uh, and it'll give you sort of a more visual picture about what it actually looks like. So that's it. I call it silly sounds. Uh, I love it for the reasons I outlined. So please give it a try. In the comments below, let me know if you have questions. Talk about how it went. Um, what could you suggest I'm all part of that teaching community like I said which is so much more valuable than um, a lot of professional development if you like this video please like and consider subscribing and until next time I'm hoping you're putting the play back in Shakespeare